Every day when I commute to my office, I use a contactless smart card called Presto to pay for my trip. Around Canada, there are over a dozen smart card systems put in place in over 40 cities across seven provinces. So a lot of people use similar systems every day. These cards are the latest way that transit companies charge customers for using subways and buses. They're sold as more convenient for riders. With many of them, you can set up automatic charges to your credit card and it eliminates the need for transfers. In Toronto, riders wondered why it took so long to join other Canadian cities that have these systems. So they're popular. But what do we give away every time that beep goes off? Too much. We at the Canadian Civil Liberties Association want to flag a problem that involves all of us. We are concerned about a disturbing new normal when it comes to your data. Let's look at Toronto's Presto card as our example today. Presto encourages you to create an account. Account holders get benefits such as the ability to link their Presto to a credit card, set automatic reloads, and cancel cards if they get lost. But the system also records the time and location of every tap to enter the transit system. When you register your card, you link that location information to your identity. Every time you get on a bus, streetcar, or subway, it's logged. The data sticks around for a long time, at least five years. The company that owns Presto, Metrolinx, reserves the right to share that information with police or transit safety officers. They reserve the right to do this at their own initiative and without a warrant. If you don't want a corporation like Metrolinx to have all this information, it's not impossible to avoid. You can still buy a new Presto card for $6 and load it with cash at a service desk or some, but not all, of the self-serve machines. If you don't want to register the card, Metrolinx still logs your trip, but there won't be a name attached. Preserving your privacy that way is a hassle. If you want a new card every month to make sure the data doesn't accumulate, it costs you extra. The worst part of it is, it didn't have to be that way. Many of the benefits of a reloadable card are possible without storing your information. Metrolinx could have made more privacy protective design choices, but they didn't. Why should you care? This isn't a surveillance conspiracy. It's not even an exceptional case of data collection. But the fact that it's not exceptional is the problem. Old things that didn't collect our information are being replaced with new things that do. The expectation that we should give away our personal data for a small convenience or use a product we're already paying for is the new normal. It happens online with almost every app or website, but it's also happening offline. Devices like smart light bulbs, fridges, cars, and toys are becoming more common. As this happens, our everyday behavior becomes a data stream. If you read the average privacy policy for one of these things, not that anyone does, it'll probably tell you that companies can use that data for everything from optimizing their own site or product, that is using what they know about you to benefit themselves, or sell what they know to other parties for profit. It's called surveillance capitalism, which is a fancy way of saying businesses have decided that watching and predicting our behavior has so much potential to make money that they deserve to do it, whether we like it or not. Canadian society seems to be welcoming surveillance capitalism into our lives. Or are we? Most of the times, the info we give up seems tiny, and we can't see the behind-the-scenes process that often happens, where all those tiny pieces get together. Even if we don't care if someone knows what subway station we go to every morning, we might care if we knew that an algorithm could allow assumptions about our income, race, and employment status based on that information. To be fair, Presto's not doing that, but the point is they could, and other companies with different ways of accessing our location information do. Sometimes it's because we've come to believe it's how the online world has to work, but that's false. It's not how it has to work, it's how companies are choosing to make it work because it benefits them. The only people who are going to worry about whether it benefits us is, well, us. Because here's the thing, every tiny piece of information adds up. Programmers are advancing machine learning and data analytics algorithms at a frantic pace. We have no idea what morsel of data we give away is going to be significant. The old saying, if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear, was always problematic. Today, it's out of date. People, or more likely algorithms you don't know or understand, can use the information you think doesn't matter to affect you in ways you'll never find out. It's not about what you have to hide. It's about what you have to lose. And of course, it's not just private sector companies. Governments are data hungry too. So what do you do? Do you toss away your Presto card and start saving up change? Do you chuck your laptop out the window? Probably not, although some days it's tempting. 
But as a group, we need to take Presto, Facebook, Google, and other companies harvesting our data to account. We need to make them explain what they take, why they need it, and how allowing them to have it benefits us. They need to do it in a way that isn't a long, dense text they're banking on nobody reading. And we need to have meaningful choice to say no. I want the service I'm paying for, but you can't use my information for anything else. Oh, and by the way, you should be designing your systems to protect my ability to make that choice. One way to enforce these kinds of rules is stronger privacy laws. CCLA advocates for updated laws that address risks created by new ways of collecting and using information. If companies aren't being accountable and fair when using our data, there should be consequences. One thing you can do to resist routine and invasive data collection is by helping CCLA. We fight every day to improve your data privacy in Canada. Click the link in the description to join the cause. Also, be sure to subscribe to CCLA's YouTube channel to stay updated on civil liberties issues in Canada. Data privacy is an ongoing struggle, but CCLA is here to defend your right to experience the 21st century on your terms.